Please welcome Ms. Ricky and Vicki Rushing. Um, I had asked Ricky, uh, he, they had shared with me that they were going to be going to Israel. And so the Lord had put it on my heart the end of last year to go to the Holy Land. And so Ricky and Vicki have just gotten back from the Holy Land. And I know many of you have been praying with us. And we were asking the Lord to protect you and bring you home yeah. <laughs> safely. Amen. Woo. Amen. And so um, without further ado, I would just give you the pulpit and say, Shalom. Shalom. <laughs> God bless you guys. <clears throat> well, uh, before we, <clears throat> excuse me, before we begin, <clears throat> <clears throat> sinus drainage in my throat. Not nervous. Before we, before we begin, we do want to thank you for, for your prayers and your supports. And uh, we do have a couple, another couple with us that was uh, on the trip with us, and uh, they're friends of uh, Steve and Patty's. And uh, I have some other family members and uh, some neighbors with us today. So uh, won't you give them a special hand for being with us today? <clears throat> but we are excited uh, to have had the opportunity to go to Israel. Uh, I went back in 2005, and, and I knew that I wanted to go back because it was such an, uh, such an experience and so overwhelming with the amount of information you receive and the, and the journey that you take. And uh, uh, so I wanted my wife. It was on my bucket list. I wanted my wife to go with, it, with me, and so we did. And, uh, but, but before we get into celebrating uh, our trip and sharing our experiences and getting you engaged in that experience, we, we want to we take a moment to think about Israel. Uh, Israel's in a trying time of tribulation right now, but it's nothing new. If you would go to the next slide, please. <clears throat> the Lord has said to Abram, leave your country, your people, and your father's household and go to the land I will show you. Uh, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make you a great, your name great, and uh, you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all the people on the earth will be blessed through you. Israel had a beginning. It's God's ordain there is a nation of Israel. Amen? Yes, amen. <clears throat> and, and if we think about what God has said here to Moses, so I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And listen, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, I think I got that, and Hivites and Zezusites. I probably messed all them up. <laughs> but the point is there were other people living there. And, and, and there were other people who were not inviting to this nation of Israel, these, these chosen Jews coming into the land. Uh, and, and I want you to think about what uh, Moses also, God said to Moses, I will establish your borders from the Red Sea to the, to the Sea of the Philistines and from the desert to the river. I will hand over you to the, the people who live in the land and you will drive them out before you. Remember, listen, I need to underline that you will drive them out before you. Uh, do not make a covenant with them or with their gods. Do not let them live in your land or they will curse you to sin against me because of the worship of their gods will certainly be a snare to, the, to you. Have we ever, any, any of you ever read the Old Testament? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing new what's going on in Israel today. Yeah, that's right. and, and what is going on today will will pass. One day it will pass. Uh, but there's a battle, will always be a battle against God's chosen, chosen people. They will always be a part, uh, they will always be a part of us because of what the Bible says. Uh, listen to what Paul writes. He says, you are all sons and daughters of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave or, nor free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. You are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Yeah. You are heirs. Hallelujah. God's people live in Israel. God's children will visit Israel again. Yeah. This will pass. Yeah. 
The Holy Land is a part of us. Yes. And I want that to sink in for just a second. The Holy Land is a part of us. Suffering is real, but God. Yes. No weapon formed against Israel shall prosper. Yes. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Yes. But they need our prayers. Yes. They need our love, and they need our support. Yes. Israel in the Middle East needs our prayers. We need to stand with them. Yes. There's an evil who raised his head up two weeks ago, and it's not over with. But it needs to be confined, and it needs to be resolved. Yes. Peace needs to be brought back into Israel. Yes. Because we want to go back to Israel. We want to be able to make that a part of our life and our journey for those of us who are able and will go. We want that to be a part. We want peace in their land. What an experience to travel from, from shore to shore, from north to south, and, and to experience the land that, uh, that we have. Wait, wait till I move to the slide. Don't slide. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> They're getting ahead of me just a little bit. I had a little clicker, but it wouldn't work this far. So, so yeah, don't, don't, don't slide it until I, I say next. Uh, but we want to be a part of that. We want to be a part of the prayers that we pray for them. I asked my wife to pray, and, uh, and then we'll go into the, to the demonstration. I'm going to pray, but this one on? On. I mean, when you can hear me, it's green. Yeah. So, yes, so. I think I heard it. Maybe. Nope. Yes. Okay. But I, I just want to say, yeah, thank you. I just want to say a couple things. Uh, my husband is definitely a man of peace. Like, he has peace. But we were in Israel on the 7th, the 8th, and the 9th. And uh, I had to run in, into peace. Like, right, Kareem? I'm sure she can testify that um, I have peace too. But I had to keep going into the Lord to get my peace and maintain my peace. He just had peace. Like, siren would go off, and he was like, I'm coming. I'm like, now. <laughs> now, but, but, you know, praise the Lord. <laughs> I sent a man back to get him. <laughs> Told him three times, that's enough. But I, I just want to say that God is real. Um, going to Israel was an experience. I want to do it again. Um, and I'm glad we were there when we were there. It was God ordained that we were there at that time, at that place. It was, it was God ordained. He wanted us to see the bomb shelters. He wanted us to see what they really lived through and um, to experience real Israel. What they go through all the time that they take so lightly because it happens all the time. So um, if you're older, I just want to say this because I know I'll forget if you don't talk to me back at the table. Talk to Miss Kareen back here. Kareen, can you raise your hand? She's amazing. I'm sorry. She's amazing. Like, yeah. like some people say, well, I don't want to go because, you know, I can't walk. But I'm telling you what, the travel agency knew the ones that had more struggles than other ones did because of physical conditions. And they made um, provisions. Well, provisions for it, right? And so <clears throat> talk to her because she did amazing things, but there were some things that she did in a different way, right? So she can share that with you. But uh, let's do bow our head and let's do, um, I want to thank all y'all first for praying for us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, we had some good prayer warriors praying for us, and I'm so grateful. But Father, we uh, bow our heads today, God. Um, we honor you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Uh, we honor you. Uh, we thank you for who you are, God. We thank you for what you're doing, God. We thank you for this church that is a praying church. Yes, Lord. That is a word church <clears throat> because there is life and death in our tongues. Yes. And we haven't got it yet, Lord. Forgive us. We haven't got it yet. We either speak life or we speak death. There isn't a middle ground. So, Father, I thank you for your protection over uh, the groups that were there, Lord. Um, I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing within Israel, Father, for the souls that are being saved, God. I thank you, Lord, right now, Father, we declare that you protect the innocents of both Palestinians, Jews, Christians. Father, for your people, Lord, protect the innocents, God. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would just confuse the enemy. 
Confuse the wicked, God. Yeah. Let everything that they try to do just uh, be brought down in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And Father, we thank you for protection all around Israel, Lord. We pray for the peace of Israel, yes, which peace, Father, <laughs> shalom, means peace, prosperity, help, wealth. Father, we thank you, God, for your people. Yeah. We thank you for the land that you walked, where your word uh, was rooted and sprouted out into all nations, God. We thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for the experience, Lord, how your spirit led and guided our trip, God, so supernaturally that we probably don't even know some things that you did. So grateful, God, to be able to see the tomb and see Golgotha, see the house of Caiaphas, see the Mediterranean Sea and the Sea of Galilee, Mount of Olives, God. Breathtaking, Lord. <clears throat> the murals that are there that tell the whole story. We've never seen such beauty, God. And we're so grateful that you allowed us to partake of it. We're grateful that we got to see the Sukkot tents, Father, as they were going through their, their time of festival, Father. So grateful. We saw you. We know you're here. We know you're there. We know you're everywhere, God, waiting for your people to look up. So we look up, God. We thank you for shining favor and for bringing every hostage home, God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the name let them not be able to harm one more hostage. Yes, in Jesus. Don't let them be able to, God. Supernatural, God. Supernatural, God. Supernatural, God. And we thank you for it, God. Help us to continue to pray, God. Prayer isn't a minute prayer, but prayer is prayer without ceasing. Yes, Lord. Every time we think about it all day long. We thank you for blessing this time, Lord, and allowing us to be part of it. Bless each and every one today as they hear. Let them hear through your spirit. We love you and we bless you today. In Jesus' holy, mighty name. Amen. My wife just reminded me that we have a show and tell table at the back in the corner as you come in the entrance. Uh, do have, if you have questions at the end or you'd like to go and see some of some the uh, items we brought back, uh, both this trip and the first trip that I took, uh, please do so. Uh, but if you go to the next slide. What does the slide say? Holy Land. Experience the Bible come alive. You know, we take vacations. We go to the mountains. I used to come to Florida when I was in Georgia. That was every other year we'd go south and north. I'm on a permanent vacation. I tell my brother who's with us today, I'm on a permanent vacation now. Why? We don't have to go anywhere else. <laughs> my wife and I took some near 5,000 photos. <laughs> I'm going to show all of them to you today. <laughs> 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 so, so, so a photo is not going, not going to depict the experience that you have. What I want to do today in just a few minutes, I want to show you some places we went, and I want, and I want to do it through the filter of an experience. I want you to think about being there and doing that yourself. Maybe some of you, I talked to Tom this morning, and uh uh, he has been to Israel. Maybe others of you have had the opportunity to go to the Holy Lands as well. But I want to give you an opportunity to, to, to experience being there and, 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 and listening to the guide and, and walking the, the streets of the ground or, and the smelling the air, touching the water. Make it, make it an experience for you. And hopefully one day you will be able to go and share that yourself. So, so it, I'm going to go through some of the slides very quickly. It's just for you to get a picture and a snapshot, and, and then we're going to move on, because I only have a few minutes to do this. Uh, so next slide, please. 
Uh, photos cannot capture the experience of walking the steps of the promised land. Next. Open to any story in the Bible, and it happened near or in the Holy Land we call Israel. It is a part of us. Can you find on that? Open the Bible. We took a trip with, through Travel with Friends. Highly recommend anyone who sees or hears. Uh, we would recommend them. Uh, we had an 11-day uh, trip. It turned out with our extra travel to, to Jordan and to Qatar. We, was, we were 12 days getting back home. Actually, a little more than that time we got back uh, early Friday morning. But uh, it's a beautiful journey. Next. Next. We went first, uh, we went, uh, we landed. I think I missed one, didn't you? Go back one. There you go. That's where I want to start. We traveled Israel through a, a great bus. It's not a, it's not a junky uh, cart with a, drawn by a horse or donkeys. <laughs> it's a nice travel bus, air conditioned. It's beautiful. Uh, our bus driver is the guy in the blue on the left. He had a nickname called uh, Money Mike. Now, we didn't know. I, I had a problem calling him Money Mike until I, I got to know him a little better. And he dealt with a lot of money. He, he was the person who, who, who just seemed to be able to help you buy things, uh, to help you. Uh, he sold the water to us on the bus. You know, he just, he handled a little thing. He'd give change of currency, whatever he he just handled the money, so he had, he's a great, 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 great guy. Uh, next slide. Uh, first place we went to Caesarea on the Mediterranean Ocean. Uh, uh, next. There we saw, uh, there's another picture of it. Next slide uh, was the Roman uh, Colosseum. It was a Roman established at the time. You don't, the Colosseum's in the back. It's a little hard to see. Uh, but, but walking the ground, next slide. And, and there's a Roman uh, Philistine, uh, Philistine uh, city. Next slide. I had one with the water, I thought, but I didn't. But anyhow, I want to talk about, you know, when you go, think about, think about touching the water of the Mediterranean, feeling the water, going into that place. Uh, we, we landed in Tel Aviv, we loaded the bus, and we began to travel the, 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 uh, the western shore, no, the, the eastern shore of, uh, of Jerusalem, and uh, I mean, uh, east shore of the Holy Land. And then we, we loaded the bus and we started making our way through the Holy Land. This is not in chronological order for where we travel, but I want it to be uh, an experience where we began the journey and then ended, uh, ended the journey in Jerusalem. We went to the Church of Beatitudes, very significant place. Anybody ever heard of the Sermon on the Mount? <laughs> Jesus' first teaching, first discourse, first three chapters, five, six, and seven of Matthew. There's a church they built it. They're on the, uh, uh, in a place that the, Jesus would have had many miracles, especially the, the first teaching of the Sermon on the Mount. Next slide. It overlooks the Sea of Galilee. As you see on the very back in the middle, there's a boat, uh, probably a tour boat uh, uh, sharing uh, passengers. They're riding on the Sea of Galilee. Next slide. Uh, then we went to a village called Tapach. Ta uh, to buy, uh, outside the church of multiplication where Jesus had many miracles, feeding of the 5,000, uh, outside of Capernaum where you know Jesus lived. Uh, next slide. Uh, there, that church, you, inside the church, and then there's a baptism made out of a cross uh, where they would uh, step down into it and they would be baptized. We use an animal trough here at the church. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, they, uh, historical meaning, very, very significant, looking back at history and how they were, early Christians were developing their faith and they were practicing their faith and they were in, uh, uh, doing what the scriptures taught us to do. Thanks. Uh, we went outside of there, it was the primacy of St. Peter. We went down into the water where you could go to the, to the Sea of Galilee. Uh, uh, there is uh, significant because at the end of uh, Jesus' resurrection, he met with the disciples uh, who were back now at Galilee. As you know, some of them were fishermen. They lived near uh, Capernaum. And there Jesus forgives Peter. Uh, he also reinstates him. And, uh, you know, he asked, he asked Peter, do you love me? And Jesus, uh, he asked him three times. And uh, Peter, of course, said, yes, Lord, you know I do. And he reinstated him. No, you know he forgives uh, denied uh, Jesus three times uh, there at the house of, of Caiaphas, or right outside the house of Caiaphas. 
Uh, but there he reinstates him. Uh, as uh, we just talked about the fish, the 153 fish that, that God give, uh, Jesus give bounty to the disciples. Uh, an amazing place to go, but a lot of miracles happening on that seashore of the Sea of Galilee. Next. Uh, we took a boat ride uh, on the Sea of Galilee. It's not like the, the rowboat to the disciples would have had. It's a little bit more motorized, and, uh, but we went on the boat. Uh, next. Uh, we went out to, into the, uh, the uh, part of, not all the way in the center, but out into a uh, part of the Sea of Galilee. We're looking back into uh, uh, the sh uh, seashore. I'm not sure if that's Capernaum or Cana. Uh, all this got, gets kind of confused when you got so much information coming to you and sorting it all out. But imagine sitting on the Sea of Galilee and, and being a part of remembering the stories that took place in the Bible. There were two Storm, storms that come up in uh, doing the disciples in Jesus' times. Uh, thank God we didn't have a storm come up, but uh, there are times when Jesus and the disciples were on that water. Uh, the disciples I mentioned, a number of them were fishermen. They fished out of that water. Uh, and next slide. Uh, we went into the Capernaum, which was the town of Jesus. A lot of things happened there. Next we see that uh, it was the house of Peter. You know, that's one of the first things that we see Jesus doing coming out uh, from the Sermon on the Mount, as he begins his ministry, he moves into, uh, he moves into Capernaum, uh, where he goes to Peter's mother-in-law, who was sick. Uh, he heals her, and it becomes his residency when he was in that area. Uh, there's a synagogue just to the left of that, uh, which we, I didn't put a slide in, it, uh, but, but Jesus spent a lot of time there at that house, in that home. It's in the city of Capernaum. Uh, Capernaum. Next. We had a fish. It took me the first time I went to Israel, I couldn't eat the fish with the head on there. <laughs> but it didn't offer an option this time. Uh, but delicious fish, they, they said it came out of the Sea of Galilee. I don't have a clue where the fish came from, but it's a very delicious fish. Uh, but you get the experience, something that, that would have been a part of their culture, would have been something Jesus would have done. It would have been natural for the disciples to be eating fish. It was their livelihood. Uh, and so they took us head fish immediately after we went on the boat ride. Next. Uh, hotels outside. Uh, a lot of pictures have people in it. Couldn't get them all out. I wasn't doing a, really a slideshow for. I was doing family memories and personal memories. That's my sister. You've seen her come here. Uh, but we stayed three nights at the hotel at Tiberius, uh, right off the seashore of Galilee. Wonderful hotel. Uh, next. Uh, sorry, I didn't think about taking a picture before we made unmade the bed, but uh, you kind of see the rooms are nice. Uh, these are five-star hotels, beautiful hotels. Next, uh, just a look inside the, the bathroom there. Really a nice, nice accommodation. When you go to Israel, you're, they're going to treat you uh, like kings and queens. They want, they, want, they want tourists there. That is a livelihood for them. They want you to be a part of their culture. Uh, the Jewish, uh, uh, Christian, and the Muslim uh, culture there, they want you there. Even though there's fighting in Gaza, the Palestinians all over Israel, and, and they are friendly. They want you there. They, they take good care of you. Uh, the radical terrorists that are in Gaza is not what you have in Israel. Uh, nothing like, uh, because many of the areas in the West Bank is controlled by Palestinians, and so we were able to go, to go to places that was under Palestinian control, and it was a natural thing uh, for us to do, and it was safe for us to do. So uh, uh, I just want to give encouragement uh, that, and let you know that it was safe. My wife said I had peace. I had peace. I was on the best land possible. I, was, I mean, I had, I had God's favor on our lives. It was a great place to be. Next. Amen. Uh, that's the hotel where we were at. Uh, it's just a seashore. Uh, part of the sea is right outside of our hotel. You could go down. Uh, that's a little swimming area. Wasn't anyone swimming? Uh, we did have one gentleman from our group that I saw swimming. Uh, a number of our uh, 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 group uh, would. I saw him with the feet in the water. I put my feet in the water. Uh, and uh, one of our members in the group, you put your feet in your water, and all the minners come eat. You know, attacking your feet. Kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> Uh, anybody likes fresh water, but it's all fresh water. Next slide. <clears throat> uh, we went to the, the first wedding. You know, Jesus' first miracle was at Cana, Cana uh, where he performed uh, his uh, turning water into wine. Uh, imagine being in the place where Jesus performs his first wedding. We had an opportunity to do a reaffirmation of our wedding. 
And that was amazing. At the very place that we took, we took our wedding vows all over again, those of us who were married. I got chill bumps going down my legs thinking about that. Uh, amazing place. Next slide. Just a different look going back into it. A couple of our group members there. Uh, amazing place. Any historical place in Israel that has any significant meaning at all, they've built a church. They've, they made it a place where you can come and visit. Uh, they, 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 they've, uh, they've guarded those places. They've protected those places. They want those to be preserved for all of eternity. So they built churches. The Catholics went in. Uh, the Greek Orthodox has gone in. The Russian church has gone in. Uh, a number of uh, mainline churches uh, around the world, they've established churches, and uh, they have monks on place, uh, priests on site, and so forth, to, to secure these places. Next. Uh, just an inside of one of the churches we went to, I couldn't, I couldn't remember exactly where it was, but just take a moment and look at the, the detail of that church. Um, uh, a lot of these churches have uh, an incorporation of both uh, uh, the Catholics or something, the Greek Orthodox, the Russians, they all kind of meet together. Uh, they have different times, they have services, but they open up to the public, so you're able to visit these sites. Next. Uh, we went to the Jordan River. What happens at the Jordan River? <laughs> Baptism, yes. Uh, we had uh, an opportunity to go there. Next slide. Uh, we had a, uh, our group. We did baptism. That's our uh, host, uh, Pastor uh, Reverend John Haney on the, on the left, and that's me on the right. And we were baptizing, re, uh, reaffirming baptism of those who wanted to uh, in the Jordan River. Uh, amazing place. They have a site set up so you could do that. Uh, that is not where we discovered later that uh, Jesus was baptized, but I'm glad we didn't go into the water where Jesus was baptized, uh, as you will see in just a moment. Go ahead, next slide. Uh, this is where they say Jesus, uh, this is where they say John the Baptist was baptizing. It's further, uh, uh, further north of, uh, of uh, where we were, much further north up towards uh, Jerusalem. Uh, I mean, uh, south up towards uh, Jerusalem. It is... Uh, it is a place. Next slide. Uh, you see how mucky the water is? Uh, really muddy. I did get a, a chance to get a little water. That first slide, you see people on the other side. That's the Jordan, the country Jordan. Uh, so the, the Jordan, uh, the river separates Syria and Jordan at the present time. So uh, we were now uh, up at, uh, at uh, the Jordan side. So all that up at the upper screen is all Jordan. Uh, on the other side, uh, Somebody went to reach and get some water. Uh, they hollered at them. They wouldn't let them even get water out the river. No baptism, nothing from the Jordan side. Uh, but to the left of what you see there, they were allowing baptism. Uh, very mucky, uh, very congested. So I'm glad our, our group let us do it where we were. Next. Then we traveled to the Dead Sea. Uh, very historic. Uh, the Jordan River feeds into the Dead Sea. It also has springs and water from the mountains during the rainy season. It keeps the water alive. Uh, we did bring back uh, some uh, salt from the bottom of it. You know, we have beach with sand and shells here. They have actually clumps of salt at the bottom. So we brought back some to, uh, to show you what the salt looks like. Next slide. Uh, that is, let you know that the Dead Sea is not a little body of water. It is huge. It goes for miles. I don't know the uh, uh, circumference of it, circumference of it, but uh, it is a huge place. Next slide is uh, where we were swimming. Uh, it is a place where you, you don't sink. You just lay and you float. Uh, and you can't imagine not being able to, you don't want, you don't want the water in your mouth and, and eyes. You, you definitely don't want it to burn. But you just lay there and you float. You cannot sink. You literally cannot sink uh, and you just float. Imagine floating in that water. And let me say, when we went, it uh, was the 1st of October, it was warm. So it's not like, I went in the uh, end of November and December. The first time I went, it was so cold, I couldn't take my clothes off to go out there. It was just way too cold. So the t season of the year when you go has a big impact. Uh, they're just beginning their raining season. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a perfect time to go. October is a perfect time to go. The best month of the year, they say, to go. Next slide. Here's our hotel uh, in the very center. It's called the Royal Hotel. Uh, like I said, all... Uh, uh, Wonderful hotels, great places to, to stay. Next slide. 
You see a picture, uh, Vicki uh, took a picture of uh, the sun setting as we're looking over the Dead Sea. Uh, the Jordan is back where the sun is uh, setting on that side, so uh, it's just a, just a great place. Next, next slide. Uh, we went to the city of Nazareth. Anybody know what the significance of the city of Nazareth is? <laughs> Jesus lived there. That's where he grew up. That's, that's where he, he spent his time. It's uh, very modernized now compared to what it used to be. Uh, next slide. Uh, just another picture of over, overseeing the city of Nazareth, and then the next slide. Uh, we went uh, to the Church of Annunciation, where the angel Gabriel announced to Mary she would bring birth to Jesus. Uh, and we know that that took place. That's the outside, the inside the church. Next. Uh, the front of the door of the church, uh, of the Annunciation, depicts the entire gospel. If you go from the top left down, and you go back to the right and go down, you see the whole entire gospel. So uh, it's, it's an amazing place to go and to look and to experience. Next. Uh, and, and then we went into the Nazareth village, which was a replica of the old Nazareth, the original place where Jesus would have lived. And uh, I only got a few slides just to kind of give you an idea that they uh, reenact the, uh, the, the city of Nazareth during the Jesus time. Next. You see, it, we had a guide who went through it, uh, explained it. Uh, everything in there is from that period of time, uh, during the time of Jesus. Next. Uh, you see on the left, he's opening scrolls. Remember what Jesus did when he began his ministry? He went to the synagogues, he unrolled the scrolls, and he talked about, uh, quoted scripture from Isaiah, you know, about uh, he come, uh, and I can't quote it off the top of my head, but anyway, he opened the scrolls and, and, uh, he would, have, he would have done that. On the right, it's just pottery making. So next slide. Uh, they made, she actually made, uh, put some cotton together from the, the wool of the, ram, the lambs. And uh, she's weaving uh, uh, thread together and she's making stuff. So uh, pretty incredible. And she, while we watched her for just a minute, she put some together. She did some weaving for us. Next. Uh, <sighs> The Bible says, but when the time had fully come, God did what? He sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. Because you are sons and daughters, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. Next slide. We went to the church of the nativity the place of Jesus. It would have been the place of the manger. It would have been the place where uh, uh, outside of Bethlehem where the innkeeper said there's no more room, but I've got a place for you here. And so uh, next slide. We went inside. Now they've turned into a beautiful church in the center there. When I went back in 2005, all that chancellor area, all the altar and everything was open. But since I went to uh, from that time until this time, they built a, a, a wall up there so you can't really uh, see the altar. But what's amazing about the altar is sitting exactly over the top of where Jesus is, would have been born. So next slide. Next slide. You go down uh, some steps and you go down up underneath that altar. And, and there, next slide, you go to the exact place where they have marked for Jesus. Uh, it was very busy. Uh, we didn't get a chance to spend much time, and they were not recommended. But the first time I went, uh, you, could, you could stick your hand down and you could touch the, to the rock, the place uh, where, they, where they say Jesus would have born, to the very spot. But, but the star right there represents the pl birthplace of Jesus. Uh, and that takes us back 2,000 years ago. That takes us back to the origin of our Christian faith. That takes us back to Jesus, our Lord and Savior. That takes us back to, to God's uh, so loved the world that he sent his one and only son. That takes us back to, to demonstrate some how much God will love us, to redeem us, to save us, and, and to provide a way for us to have eternal life. Amen? Uh, wonderful, amazing place. Next, next slide. Uh, shopping in Bethlehem. You know they want your money. Amen? <laughs> next slide. Uh, we went into, and, and a lot of things are made out of olive wood. I mean, uh, most every shop we went into had olive wood. To, uh, they took us into shops that are Christians. Uh, so they, they were honest people. They were good people, people they knew. Uh, next slide. Uh, look at the lion and the lamb. Next slide. Look at the manger scenery. Next slide. 
Just, just, I mean, just walls. I mean, a whole place. And I circled the Merry Christmas because if it was not for, for Christians, they would never have Merry Christmas. On. <laughs> but they're already marketing early for Christmas. I kind of thought that was I have a marketing degree, so it's kind of like, yeah, they already, they already got it out. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> Uh, here's a place, and see how large that is compared to the woman is, uh, who happened to be on our, uh, for $85,000, 85, you can, they have send, they have, they, they have mail it home for you, they'll ship it home. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> Had a lot of great pieces in there, but that's, that's just the, one of the most expensive. Next slide. Uh, and then we went out to the shepherd's field. The shepherd's field is where they, uh, the, the angel Gabriel announced the birth of Jesus. So you kind of see, uh, looking back into Bethlehem, uh, next slide, uh, they built a church there called, and I don't remember the name, but I didn't put it up there. Uh, but uh, anyhow, it's the shepherd's church. Uh, and then make one more slide, a good look inside of it. Nope. Uh, but while we were out in uh, Bethlehem, we... We heard the sirens, and this is where we saw smoke uh, on that Saturday, uh, as you see in the West Bank near the Shepherd's Field. Uh, uh, but that is as close as we ever got to any danger that I, that I saw or heard. Uh, from then on, we went more uh, north, back up in Jerusalem. So we, we, we went further north, away, away from Gaza. Next trip. Mount Zion is slightly south of the old city. Uh, next slide. Uh, the Church of St. Peter is significant. That's the place where G, uh, Peter would have denied Jesus three times. Next slide. Uh, a doorway. Just it, what they've done to, to replicate the Israel and its historical value and the, and the biblical stories, they, they've been very creative. Mosaic floors and mosaic ceilings. I, I didn't put any of those pictures in here, uh, but just amazing. Uh, next slide. Uh, just inside the church. Next slide. House of Caiaphas. You know, he was the high priest at the time. That's where they arrested uh, Jesus on the Garden of Gethsemane and, and moved into the house of uh, Caiaphas. Next slide. Uh, water citron. Uh, that's the entrance at the top. Down at the bottom, they say that's where they would have lured Jesus from the time of 12 at night to about 9 the next, uh, early that next morning. Uh, so that they began to the trial of Jesus, so they would have lured him. We had scripture and prayer down at, inside that citron where Jesus would have been held. Next. Uh, there at the same location, you can see how close you are to the old city of Jerusalem. And keep in mind, they're moving Jesus uh, from one place to the next. Uh, and it's looking, overlooking, uh, we're on Mount Zion, it's overlooking Mount Moriah would have been first uh, a biblical account of where Abraham would have taken Isaac and would have taken him up to, act, uh, to sacrifice him. It's to where the temple where Solomon uh, built the very first temple. Uh, it is the place where uh, Jesus, of course, has then become the Lamb of God who takes away our sins. Next slide. Uh, I had to put in our grandson. <laughs> I figured by now you're already bored. Uh, I'm running out of time. Uh, and so I figured, but Stephen is three months old and uh, his name is Stephen. And they give him the name because Stephen is the first uh, martyr in Acts chapter 6 and, ver and chapter 7. Uh, so he's going to be a mighty man of God. I got to go through the rest yeah. of them pretty quick. Next slide. Uh, old city of Jerusalem. Just going to have to look at it. The old city gate. Next slide. Uh, outside the teaching, the steps on the left by the palm tree is where Jesus would have been teaching. Uh, it's outside the, uh, the city walls, outside the temple next. Out, just more uh, shots of outside the old city walls next. Uh, just more shots outside the wall next. Uh, then we were plan preparing to go inside the Temple Mount next. We went into the Wailing Wall. Uh, it's the, uh, the church of the... Uh, uh, the, the gold dome on the rock, the Muslim shrine, it's built up on, on top of uh, both Solomon's temple and, and then Herod's temple uh, that built for God. Uh, next temple, I mean next, excuse me, <laughs> next slide. Uh, if, from that place you can look back over, the, the, up at the top of the screen is the Mount of Olives. Uh, 
Uh, it is uh, in between there is the Garden of, uh, is the Kendron Valley. Uh, the Mount of Olives over behind the, the very top of the screen would have been Bethany. Uh, uh, would have been uh, Bethany where uh, Jesus would have stayed with with uh, with Lazarus, Martha, and Mary, and then uh, then a little bit further in up on the top, you would have Bethridge. But it's also the place where Jesus would have came back uh, on Palm Sunday, would have come down through there, coming into Jerusalem. Uh, for that very last week on Palm Sunday. So you kind of have an idea where he traveled and how he got in. Next slide. Uh, we took a journey on the Villa de la Rosa uh, means, uh, Villa de la Rosa, which is the way of the sufferings, the path Jesus took to the cross. Next. There's 12 stations, some of the streets inside the old city. Next. Uh, just slides of the places. We didn't, I didn't put them all in, but next. Uh, just the next plate, next. Yeah, the more st city streets, next. There you go. Uh, narrow cars up and down East Street. The, sh the slide on the left is uh, after the invasion, after the Hamas attacked Israel. Uh, it was early that morning, and uh, the guy said they hadn't opened up their shops yet. But the first time I went, all this was open. It was an open market. So very, very busy, which we were blessed because we could go up and down and go where we wanted to without all the crowds. So uh, very, very safe after the, uh, the bombing. Uh, next slide. Uh, just more streets. Uh, they drive on these streets. I mean, it's, it's amazing. We walk on them and they drive on them. Next. Uh, I found that interesting. We walked by on one of the streets that says, God is love, and notice the three different languages uh, inside the old city. Uh, Christian Jews and Muslims co-inhabit this place. Uh, you are in at perfect peace when you're in here. Uh, it's, it's amazing how God unites so many different people and brings us together. Just like we are here today, we're, so, we're diversified as we come together in one, one common goal, one common place. Next. Uh, just another shop. Next. Another look at another uh, huge, uh, uh, that might have been the same one. I think it is. All right, next. Some more pieces I've, I've pulled up so you look at. Next. Then looking back over, another shot, looking back over the Mount of Olives and the Garden of Gethsemane. The, uh, the Russian church is the one with the gold uh, dome at the top, and I forgot the one at the bottom. Uh, next. Garden of Gethsemane, we know how significant that is, where uh, Jesus would have uh, been praying. Many, many times he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, the Bible says, but on, on the night he was arrested, that's where he was praying for, uh, for us and, 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 and the strength to bear the cross. Next. Shows one of the oldest uh, olive trees, over 2,000 years old, is uh, marked out as what we were told. Uh, some of the trees are very old. Next. Uh, Kind of a sign to give you an idea. Looking back into the city, uh, the old city, uh, the temple, and then the Kendron Valley, and then uh, Mount of Olives, and all those are the Jewish cemetery. Next. Of course, we know that Jesus was crucified. This is one place they say that uh, it's a place of the school, Golgotha, uh, or the hill of, of uh, Calvary. But uh, there would have been three crosses, uh, and Jesus was on one. Next. And, of course, we go to the empty tomb. Uh, and there at the empty tomb, we know that Jesus was placed in the tomb. And on the third day, he, uh, third day, he, uh, third day, he, uh, and I prove it. Go, next slide. Next slide. Oh, we missed one. There's not another one. Yeah, it's empty. Yep, I thought I had another one just inside. But, yeah, yeah, the tomb's empty. Uh, we went to Megiddo, uh, which is the Valley of Armageddon. Is uh, if you know your Revelation, you know your book. Jesus is coming back, Amen. Amen. And uh, he will he will take care of evil. And we went to that valley. Uh, next slide. Uh, just from there, you can see a lot of places, Mount Hermon, and a lot of other places. Next slide. Next slide. I hate to go through them. Caesarea is where we you know we first started our trip. Uh, so you, kind of, you got an overview of the whole Holy Land. Next slide. Uh, there was a water citron there. As you go down, that's what, you know, they, it's a dry place, desert, desertless place. Uh, but they have, God has provided water in these, in these crazy places. Uh, it wasn't easy uh, to get water. They'd go down into the citron and come back up. Next. 
Uh, city of Jerusalem, a modern day city of Jerusalem outside the old city of Walls. Next slide. Uh, another outside looking back at it. Next. Outside looking at it. See how desolate it is? It's a, it's a rocky. You, you wonder how they cultivate the soil when you look out and what they are planting and growing. It's full of rock. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, but they grow their crops. Uh, next slide. Uh, on the way to Jordan, we, uh, you know, you hear a lot about sheep. Da David was a shepherd. Uh, there's the sheep pens. Uh, we did see some in Israel, but I didn't get them. Uh, but you see how they still live. Uh, something has been going on for thousands of years. Uh, long before Jesus' time, they're still doing the same way. Uh, nothing has changed. Not a thing. Uh, next slide. Uh, there was our group except for a few. Uh, I'm not sure where they... They want, yeah, they want to take pictures with us, but I'm not sure if they was uh, Israelis or who they were. But anyhow, they, they joined our group. Uh, they asked to take a picture with us. We just we just taken a group picture, so you know the guy was selling pictures for ten dollars. But anyhow, they wanted to take a picture with us. Well, I thought was I thought was amazing. Uh, it was amazing. So anyhow, they took a picture with us, and uh, uh, my wife put those words in there. <laughs> Now, you can, you, you can say what you want to. I was so proud of her to get on that, that camel, ride that camel. She did it not once, but twice at two different places. Uh, uh, you, you, a photo doesn't show that. You have to experience riding a camel. <laughs> Just saying. All right, next slide. We're about to get through. Uh, food, outside food sources that you, you could get uh, food. Notice the one on the right, they had boiled corn and so you and shucked it so you can grab corn and a piece of bread. Uh, they eat a lot of bread in Israel, a lot of bread, a lot of bread every meal. Uh, next slide. One of the restaurants, the next few slides are just food, just kind of give you an idea. You won't starve. Uh, you, you, you'll have plenty to eat. One of our places we ate, that's our guide. Uh, his name was Charlie, did a great job. He's 36 years old, I think he is. He's married to a Russian uh, woman. He went to school in Ukraine. He has a master's degree, and he's working on another degree. So he's really smart. He, has a, uh, he reads the Bible twice a year, so he's, he's extremely knowledgeable. Uh, wonderful God, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, next slide. This one of our restaurants had, at, at our hotel. We were in Jerusalem. Uh, great place to eat. Next slide. Uh, one of the meals you see, plenty of fruit. Vegetable sweet. Any sweet eaters here? You you have you have plenty to eat. I promise. Next slide. Just more food. Buffets everywhere we went. Uh, uh, just incredible food. Incredible, incredible. Next slide. Uh, on our night, at, uh, we had that's a salad. At, we was in Amman, Jordan. Our tour agency took us back through Jordan, and then we uh, flew to uh, Qatar, and from there we flew back to Israel, um, to Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, and then we made it back home. Hallelujah. Next slide. Uh, I, I didn't know Corrine and Bill was going to be with us today, but I put a slide in there uh, just showing more food, so I hope they're not embarrassed today. I use them today. I did not get permission, so I take, ask, for, ask for mercy. Next slide. Uh, just some of the food we had, amazing food, five-course meal, our tour agency, uh, provided all of this. They, they, they didn't charge us anything. I mean, they were over and above. Uh, totally amazing. Uh, next slide. We're just about through. Last slide. Uh, not, there you go. Uh, my wife was good about posting every day. Uh, if you want to see some more sli slides and have a, a better understanding of what we did that day, her, her uh, Facebook is Vicki Horton Russian. Uh, if you want to call me and ask me any questions, you're welcome to do that. Uh, but we thank you for allowing us uh, to share. Uh, I, I encourage you to go. It's a trip of a lifetime. It's an experience that, that, will, that will alter the way you look and think as you look into the scriptures, that you've been to the places that we read about. It's a place where God is ordained to be his holy, holy land. Uh, he has chosen people. He's invited us as Gentiles to become grafted into his, his kingdom. We are brothers and sisters with those in Israel, whether they be Jews or whether they be uh, Christians from Gentile uh, origin or whether they be Arab. A lot of Arab Christians over there, a lot of Paris, Palestinian Christians over there. 
Uh, a lot of great people. We have brothers and sisters all over this world because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Amen. Because of the shed blood and because now we in inherited the spirit of God that dwells within us and unites us. Uh, and therefore, we pray for one another. We love one another and we share that good news with, with the world who needs to know what a great loving God uh, he is. Amen. And uh, Amen. we thank you. God bless Amen. you all. I appreciate it. I thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Wasn't that awesome? Give it up for Ricky and Vicky. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Um, I do have brochures, but one of the things that the Lord had put on my heart, because I knew they were going to be sharing, and it's in Psalms 37, 12, and it says, The wicked plots against the just and lashes his teeth at him. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees that his day is coming. You know, what is so amazing is that um, because we, we, we've already got a planned trip for next October. And um, so as I was just thinking about this, I just thought, what a wonderful thing to be able to hear someone come back, give a witness to exactly what the word is saying. Because, see, the enemy wants to come at us, and he doesn't care if you're in Israel he doesn't care if you're in America. He doesn't really care. But, you know, our God is bigger. Amen? Amen. And so I just want you to take to heart what you've seen and, and what you've heard today. And I just want to say thank you both. And thank you for the, the couple that came with you. Thank you so much for sharing. It's just, it's really... You know, here at Living Grace Church, it's just amazing to me all the outlets that God has connected to us. And when you go to Israel, because we kept calling, we kept calling Wayne and checking on you. And I think, I think when we called one time, it was in the middle of the night. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's, it's not, you know, our time here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, you know, it's just amazing to see what God does with a group of people, you know. And so I just want to encourage you that, you know, this may, be, this may be what you're going through right now. You feel like the enemy is lashing out with you, at you. And, and you know, God says, just laugh at him. Just laugh at him. You know why? Because what Jesus has done for us is more than enough. Yes. And so, you know, as we, as we just in, are encouraged about Israel and just encouraged about who he, what he, God has done there, what the Lord told me was, is he said, Pat, that is my land, and those are my people. Amen. And I, their God, will take good care of them. Amen. And, and then he said, and America is my land, Yes. And you are my people, yes. and I will take care of you. Amen. You know, Praise so we have a God that we can serve anywhere upon the face of this earth because he goes with us. Amen. Yes. Joshua 1.9. Joshua 1.9. God reminds Joshua, you know, you may think you've got some big shoes to fill, but I am the one that's going to fill them, not you. Amen. And so, all right, well, let's just stand to our feet. Father, we thank you so much today that Ricky and Vicki had the opportunity and their whole team. Lord, and we know that others were there also. We thank you for every person that was able to return home safely. We thank you, Father, for your faithfulness, for your goodness, for your long-suffering, Lord, that you would just be with everyone that is over there right now everyone in the military, for the strategy, for the families, for the housing, every part, Father. And I just thank you, Lord, that you would keep it upon our hearts to go to your land, to see your people, your people where it all started. Lord, so I thank you now that as we meditate on this, as we look and see what goes on in the news, we will pray for your people. Yeah. We, your people, will pray for your people. 
We upon the United States of America that is under one nation, under God, stand with Israel. Yes. And Lord, we thank you now that we can be reminded to know that your perfect will will be done and established here in this earth no matter what is going on. Father, I thank you that you have been through many wars with Israel and you've given many instructions to many men and women, Lord, that you always, always have them to overcome. Your word says, Lord, that, you, that they will always overcome the enemy. I know the devil hates it, but Lord, we thank you. We declare it and decree that Israel will overcome this. And God, you are with them. You work through them. And Father, we are all for them. And we thank you now that as we go forth these next weeks, we'll keep our eyes, our hearts, and our prayers on Israel. And we give you the praise. And we're excited to see exactly how you're going to do it. Because, Lord, we know you're going to do it. Yeah. And we declare it in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Amen.